Welcome back. Tran plays Castle of Alchemists. One electric hammer, one fire vial, one acid clockwork, and the remaining two item slots are booby traps. This map is the kind of map people have been waiting for. It is a substantial increase in difficulty, but it takes so long to get to this point. And I don't think the maps in between train you very well for this. It's, it's just like this cliff. I thought it'd be useful for anybody who wants to play the game, maybe see how I set up to defeat wave one and then the waves afterwards. Wave one, in my opinion, is always the hardest because you have the fewest resources at the time. And once you start laying things down, the subsequent waves are actually disproportionately easier. I do think some game balance needs to be done there. Rather than just throwing uh, one guy after another at you. I don't know, perhaps different tactics or something. There are easier ways than what I'm doing. In fact, if you don't even worry about combos, you will do better at killing the enemy before they can go through the gate. Just use the blunderbuss, use the mortar tower, you will be fine. Booby traps too. I, I find that's very helpful. But because I am trying for combos, half of my item slots are elemental. That's the acid clockwork and the fire flask. I'm using a lot of expensive things sheerly to build up more combos, such as my acid traps, which are like 65 bucks. And if people want me to go back to final wave only to clear more maps, we can do that. I really like fighting the Oriental Warriors more than I like fighting the Arctic Warriors because you can pretty much one-shot each of the normal soldiers. For the regular fighters, I would like to back up and hit more of them with a the blunderbuss because if you're up close, one guy will just absorb all of your shots. For the beefier Oriental soldiers, I will go forward and hit him with all of the blunderbuss and that typically kills him if he's been wounded at all. While I can, of course, use my melee weapon, running out of stamina sometimes just breaks my combo because I have trouble switching gears, especially since when you put up your blunderbuss, when you fish it back out, it's not always loaded. You have to actually wait for it to finish loading, which means you're staring at the bullet at the bottom of the screen instead of what's going on in the game. Both paths, other than a tower, are completely independent of each other. Failing one of the paths is probably going to get you a game over. However, the game is generous in that you get 35 lives, or whatever you call them. I don't know what the game identifies the markers as. I mean, I just know it's the number of people that are allowed to enter. And in this game, one mini-boss is just as valuable as one regular grunt. I do think that should probably be changed. I'm using booby traps because that helps me supplement the fact I'm only one person. If you have a whole stack of four booby traps instead of two, you will have almost no problem as long as you're setting them up well. Cow traps obviously induce bleeding and slowing, but even the explosion effect of the cow traps Activating is good damage. Once you survive wave one, the rest should be a lot easier. Now, I like the flaming oil traps because it helps me combo. By setting a chain of oil, many more of the enemies are stepping into what's going to be the activation of the trap, and then they all die at once, creating the combo counter. Because you can't just kill a few guys with an element, you have to kill enough quickly, or at the same time, in order to start the counter. As you're setting ceiling traps, keep in mind that the torches on the ceiling can interfere with where your placements are, if that matters to you. You can't build on top of the fire grate, but you can build around it, and in fact, because the top 
path this is a very wide corridor. You can actually zigzag the enemy pretty well if you choose to do so. I'm not super fond of walls though because they are mega expensive when you think about it. A single wall tile, it's like 25 bucks or something. Whereas a spike trap that covers four tiles, it's like 35 bucks. Yes, I get it. They just run over the spike trap. It doesn't actually stop them. But realistically, if you're trying to think, hmm, maybe I want them to curve back and forth so I can hit them more often. You could do that and cost yourself like 75 to 150 resources. Or you could just put two spike traps and be done. So I think walls need to be way cheaper or more effective. Uh, at, at the time, they, they block more of your attacks than the enemies. I mean, if you're a vile user like I am, I like to throw flasks. If it weren't for the fact I needed booby traps to perfect this map, I would probably have three or four flasks. While there are acid flasks, when I threw them at the training dummies, they did almost no damage compared to the fire flasks. The issue with the acid flask is they do a one-time damage of, let's we'll say, like 50. Big deal. Because the fire flasks do like 10 really fast. It goes like 10, 10, 10, 10. That fast. Literally that fast. To put it in perspective, I think my hammer does like 80 damage a hit. And you can see it probably takes me about 3 hits to kill a regular grunt. So we'll say 200 hit points. You would probably have to throw a whole stack of four acid vials to kill an Oriental soldier. However, they, it does offer corrosion, which is a debuff. I don't quite remember what it does. It probably makes the enemy more vulnerable to attacks. I'm sure the librarian can tell us more about it, but realistically, the game, the way it's run, doesn't necessarily allow for the strategic usage of, of something like that. It's basically a, a, a sheer cluster mess. The teleporting guys, I'm assuming they have a cooldown on how often they can teleport, but you should probably have two layers of traps just for the teleporting guys if you aren't interested in doing as much fighting as I am. In my case, my second layer is booby traps. If they just teleport past all my acid and flames at the front, they just they end up getting ganked by the booby traps. Still, I try not to let them trigger the booby traps when possible because those are in a way, lives for me. Every enemy that activates a booby trap, that's one less booby trap I have. And sure, I'm con constantly building my arsenal, but I need that arsenal. <laughs> like, as, as time goes on, the enemy numbers increase. The quality of the enemy increases. So if I'm losing my booby traps way too early on, it spells trouble. As awesome as I think I play, I just don't really get the dread level after the first wave. Perhaps there's more to the mechanics than I realize, but that's just not happening. I've even camped to the enemy entrance with just four booby traps and just stood there meleeing the whole time. Still no dread level. My dread level is better by doing these combo shenanigans where I'm like lighting them on fire and burning them and melting them to death with acid. Now that being said, eventually I'll unlock freezing weapons think. I mean, it's somewhere in the elemental category, right? It, maybe it's not uh, implemented yet in the game, but I'm hoping that I'll unlock freezing weapons and perhaps that will help me consistently get a dread level, maximum dread level, every 
at, at the waves two through whatever. Now, even if you have a gap in your walls, sometimes the AI just has trouble recognizing it and will just knock down your walls anyway. The AI Pathfinder hologram is very good about telling you what they will do because I'm pretty sure it's the exact AI that the enemy actually uses. I would rely on it if you can stand just watching it for a little while. I have no idea if this will be changed, but I mean, because if you look at number two on my furniture set up on the bottom of the screen. Those look like wooden spikes. I don't know. But these things totally conduct electricity. Now that I have the money to do so, we're going to add electricity to our defensive mix. The acid and fire, that was just something that we could get rolling, but you really need a lot of tiles in order to consistently get electrical kills. I mean, sure, you could just activate my, your electric hammer's cores, kill a couple guys. Wow. I mean, I'm again, I'm looking for the big combos here. It's one thing to just win, but in order to produce successful videos, you got to win with a little bit of flair, do a little bit of extra, not just sort of sit there and AFK in the corner while your traps do the work. I mean, we could do that, too. I don't think anybody would watch it, though. Oh, speaking of which, if you wanted to kind of have a camera system in the game, you could just get your hero knocked down to zero hit points and he'll spend time in the med bay, and then you can just scroll around the map. Now, there are certain parts of the art style I do like, but not all of it. It, it does definitely get a little bit hectic, though, where it's almost not really worth it to try to watch what's going on. Just pay more attention to the what you'd call the macro. So you probably have heard micro, meaning you take care of the, the small details. In StarCraft, micro would be you controlling your Templars, which are basically wizards, and casting lightning death on the enemy, right? You like control one Templar at a time and just blanket the enemy area with the individual spells. That's micro. Macro is where you are taking your economy and just pumping out soldiers after soldiers to canvas the world in your name. I think, I mean, I'm not 100% sure this is how it works, but I feel like probably a lot of players get lost in trying to get better at the micro, and that's fine. It's, I mean, there's there's lots of good, good stuff you can get by doing micro, but they often completely forget about the whole macro element. Sure. One player might have 12 Templars, right? He might have basically 12 Wizards. The other player has 70 Marines. Uh, I, mean, I mean, the te 12 Templars, he's got to be paying attention to that battle to make sure that he pulls through. Whereas the 70 Marines, he just does that and then goes back to mining. And if his Marines live, cool. He'll attack, move to the enemy base. If not, he'll just build more Marines. There's definite advantages to macro. The reason I'm talking about all this is... Yeah, I can try to be looking at every opponent and, and managing everything, such as how I individually aim at my blunderbuss by walking up to the enemy with four arms, or backing up when it's time to kill the guys in the purple cloaks. By the way, the slingers, they're the little they're a little bit taller and bulkier looking than the than the guys with the blades. I mean, yes, you can see that they don't have the little chakras, that's the what Xena, the warrior princess, uses, right? Uh, Wheel of Death, uh, Dynasty Warriors kind of stuff. I find it easier just to look at their 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 posture, because when there's so many of them running around, can you actually see what they're carrying at waist level? They're, they're just, just all crowded. Maybe you can, but I find it easier just to look at their posture. I do feel that if you get lost in the micro of Castle of Alchemists, you're going to be letting people through. As a commander who's dealing with literal hundreds of enemies that you have to kill, worrying about five to ten is going to put you at a disadvantage. Which is unfortunately one of the reasons why I don't like melee in this game. You, you, you're just your stamina is weak sauce. I've got a lot of stamina upgrades, and I can still only swing like twelve times before my dude gets tired. Yes, yes, I know. I, in real life, I probably don't stand a chance of swinging that giant disco ball that my character has. Fine, I get it, but I'm also not a mutated space marine 
slash doom guy either. I'm looking forward to when I start unlocking freeze or get a more consistent electric weapon. Right now I'm limited on my electric cores. There are some maps that you seem to, at least in the, maybe in the first area of five levels, you get your hammer cores back on every wave. I don't know, but I definitely know for sure that in these current maps, I am not getting my cores back. Okay, right now I've got zero cores, watch. When the next map begins, I have zero cores again. And I'm just like a pixel away from getting max dread level. Look at that. So that means didn't really make it through. Uh, at this point, we're pretty much golden. Have to basically be asleep on the job to lose at this point. Right now I'm trying to, again, think about the big combo. It doesn't necessarily mean it's the most efficient traps. It just means it's the most score heavy, point rewarding traps. In this case, I need more electric, because electric's a little more difficult to combo. First off, I don't really have cores anymore, so it's, I've got to keep swinging at the floor just randomly. So if it looks like I'm just swinging at nothing in particular, I am doing that on purpose because I'm trying to trigger uh, electric burst across the whole floor. And yeah, I could switch the mortar out for electric shot. That, that, that's, that, that is that always a thing I could do. The mortar helps so much in case an enemy does slip past, like those teleporting guys. And the way my traps are currently set up, the electric blasts are probably not going to reach the enemy at all. Meaning that only the enemies who are dodging or getting through my traps would get shocked, but then they'll shrug that off. That would be like the mini bosses or the teleporting guys. But the mini bosses are pretty much easy to kill because currently they only show up like one at a time. Later in the game, I'm sure that they'll probably show up in the, in a, as a normal enemy. He can take you down like five hits. He's slow to attack, however, and you really shouldn't be just standing there taking the hits. Remember that you can generally get about six oil traps to light up in a line with one flame trap. I wouldn't do more than that, but I find that three is fairly good. Maybe a, maybe four or five, but three three is a pretty nice number for defeating the Oriental soldiers and starting a combo. I feel that if you want to elevate your gameplay, the fewer walls you use, and I, I say this using walls myself, but the fewer walls you use, the more effective your resource usage is. Right? Remember how I talked about that you can get more bang for your buck putting in spikes? Yeah, maybe a wall here or there, but don't go wall crazy. Walls don't really do that much. Even if you make the enemy zigzag back and forth a lot, if you literally just watch them, you'll see that it doesn't really slow them down. They, they don't hesitate at all. They just, they will blaze through all your walls. Or in some cases, just break them down, even though there's clearly a path. I have had some issues with my spider clockwork guys here. If I hop over the chasm, I, the one that I have summoned beforehand, before hopping over, he seems not to ever work again. 
But I mean, they only last for like, say, 30 seconds, so he'll, he'll despawn and I'll get another one. But you don't even have to wait for him to despawn, really. I will say I don't like the clockwork sound effect. I mean, I don't know. I'm a little sensitive to sounds, I suppose. It's one of the reasons why I spend so much time doing audio work and Sony Vegas editing for these videos. That's why, like, in Barrow Trauma, I got rid of my sonar sound. See, yeah, that, that, that is the clockwork sound. I mean, for me, that's kind of obnoxious, but maybe, maybe you just don't care. Most people probably just don't care. Regularly spend time setting down the booby traps when you have a minute to breathe. If you don't care about combos, it's even easier because you can just walk over every time your cooldown is done. If you do care about combos, you can only leave when your combo breaks, which is only when you've messed up the pattern, or when the enemy's dead and no one else is showing up. This is the one of the mini bosses. You can see he's already dead. The fact that they're just showing up by themselves makes them way too easy. But again, this is probably just trying to introduce them, though this won't be the first map you've seen them. If you're using your blunderbuss and you don't care about combos, which is personally what I would recommend if you're having trouble with the stage, the little columns in front of the enemy gates on this map, those don't block your blunderbuss shots. Because they are not actually walls, they're like little furnaces. And like in this game, it's maybe hard to tell what's an artistic cutout of a wall and what is just like a knee-high, waist-high object. Oh, I still don't get why the furnaces don't block uh, a movement. Like, I, I, no, no, actually, I understand from a design or mechanics point of view, but from a visual point of view, it looks okay. Like, that's sure the only reason why I don't use, like, a line of fire traps in front of the enemy is because I feel ridiculous having them walk through my fire traps like that. That's, that's literally the reason why I don't just, like, fire trap the whole floor. In my case, one of the reasons why I haven't walled off everything right in front of my death traps of acid and fire up there is because I surmise, though I'm not 100% sure there's a real way to, to justify this, but I surmise that I get better combos by doing so. The reason I think this is, if the enemy splits up, they're more likely to trigger all my traps at once. And of course, that is bad for actually being efficient and winning the game. Right? You could, you'll end up, I'll end up using, say, two acid traps on four guys. But, it is good for starting a combo so that you get your counter rolling. Once your counter starts, you can kill them any way you want and you should get rewarded for it. I haven't actually done the math on it, but I, I assume that as long as I said, say, this dual mix right here, I intentionally use the blunderbuss, thinking that, assuming that the rest of it, the whole thing counts as a dual mix combo. So, yeah, if they, if they walk in and multiple of them trigger many of my traps at the same time and just die that's good for me good for score bad for winning good for score they'll probably never do this but i would like it that if your character has switched off of his ranged weapon. So he's on his melee. And he's not attacking or anything. He, he literally he literally has an attack in like three seconds. You just go ahead and give yourself a free reload. I, I, I mean, don't make the player micromanage his blunderbuss or whatever that badly. People will say like, get good, scrub. I'm sure they will, right? 
But the way I look at it is, uh, I, I read like the back of the book on one of the Sid Meier Civilization manuals, and one of the things they talked about was, is this concept fun? Is that fun for our players? If not, take it out. Survival games rarely make you have to go like use the restroom and then get some toilet paper, right? <laughs> I mean, toilet paper might exist in the game, but you don't actually have to actively use it. Because it's not fun. Maybe funny, but not fun. And I don't think that anybody's going to say like, oh, that's horrible survival game because it doesn't have butt wiping. For me, waiting, watching the, the little bullet to show up in the bottom, that's not fun. All right, so how did I do? Did all right. If you want to see me hit the third area, be sure to let me know by hitting that like button. Otherwise, I think this is a good stopping point for this early access playlist.